Hello guys, this is Mike from mcprogramming.org. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a couple cool box shadows using CSS3. Right now, I set up a div with a class of container, and that's just going to contain everything inside of it. I have a width of 70%, and I use margin to center it, so everything will be in the center. And I'm just going to draw a couple boxes inside of this div, and they're going to be very simple. I'm just going to... And by the way, CodePen.io is a great way to practice HTML, CSS, and it also has a JavaScript option, but I have that closed because I'm not using it for this one. But it uses Emmet. Emmet allows you to write your markup very, very fast, and it's an incredible tool. But if you're a beginner with HTML, I highly suggest you learn how to code HTML first before you get into these tools that speed up your workflow, but once you do know it, I do recommend these tools. These tools will make your workflow incredibly fast, so I highly recommend it once you understand the basic HTML knowledge that you need. And I'm also using SAS, which is a CSS preprocessor, and the cool thing about CodePen is it does it automatically for you, and this window right here uh, pretty much live updates stuff for you. So if I just want to write hello, it gets put in there immediately. So let me make a couple divs and I'm gonna call it box. And the way in Emmet to make a div with a class of box, all you do is you write box, dot box and I'm gonna say one and then you hit tab and it automatically creates this div for you. All right? And I'm going to, after that, make a horizontal rule and that just makes a line across and this is going to separate my my boxes from each other so I'm going to make a couple boxes well anyways so now I'm going to go inside of this container down here and I'm going to write a rule for box one and this is SAS uh, you can if you're following along in CSS, just know that you just have to add the brackets right here, and then you just have to end it with a semicolon. There's a lot of other cool features SAS has, such as variables, but we're not going over that right now. We're going over box shadows, so maybe in a later tutorial I'll cover SAS. So pretty much what we need to do is first we need to give this a height and width so the box is a box. So let's uh, give it a height of, say, say 100 pixels and I'm gonna give it a width of 300 pixels and a background color of just gray so CC and I'm going to give it a margin of 100 pixels and auto and that will give it a 100 pixel margin above and below and to the left and to the right it's auto which will center it all right, so right now what we have is a box. What I want to do is give it a shadow. So the way we can do this is we can say box shadow. So I'm going to just fill these in for now. This will be a color. I'll just say RGBA. I'm going to give it that for right now, which is black. All right, so the first one is horizontal offset which means, let's see if I give it a 10 pixel horizontal offset. Whoops, I need to make this last one one. All right, so it gives it a shadow to the right, which pretty much is your x-axis. So the vertical offset is your y-axis. So if I gave that a 10 pixel, notice that the shadow is now going down 10 pixels and to the right 10 pixels. And you can also give it a negative like that so you can you can style it however you want and this right here is your blur distance and for the blur distance instead of having this solid line right here it gives it more of a shadow effect so let me just give it a blur I'll give it a five pixel blur so notice how it kinda blurs off a little bit instead of being solid and this last one we don't really need this one if we don't want it you know still function but this is the spread of the shadow. So if I gave it, you know, a bigger value, 10 pixels, it will make that a little bit bigger. So that can come in handy sometimes, sometimes not. RGBA is 
I mean, you can write black if you want, because that's basically what that's equivalent to, or you can give it a hex value, like what would that be, zero, zero, zero. So that's that's all the same. The reason I like to use RGBA is because I can give it a red value, a green value, a blue value, and then this A is going to be like the opacity. So I can give it black, but have an opacity of 0.4, and it will it will look pretty cool. So what, let me show you. So black is zero, 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 and then I want to give it the opacity of, let's say, 0.4. So see how it's a little bit lighter than just pure black? You can give it 0.7, um, 0.1. So you can, you can mess around with the color of the shadow instead of it just being black. So I'm going to give it a 0.4 for right now. All right, and now let's go and style another box. Let me do box two. And we are going to let's just copy and paste some of this. Oops. Go down. I'm going to copy and paste the height all the way down to the margin because we're just worried about the box shadow. Actually, I think a way to speed this up Let's get rid of that, and we'll just say box, and then we'll we'll give that box class to every single up here. So let's say box, and then box one will have the uh, shadow effect. So let's say box one. So now what we've done is I've taken out or factored out the height, the width, the margin, and the background of every box so I don't have to write that down every time and stop all the redundancy. So now let's uh, focus on the box 2 shadow. So what I'm going to do with the box 2, well, i got to give it box up here so we get the box. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make it have this really cool three-dimensional effect and it's hard for me to explain it. It's not going to have a shadow off to that side or that side. It's going to look like it's coming out at you so the shadow is going to go inwards a little bit. So what we're going to do is say box shadow and the first value I'm going to give it a zero. I don't want it going to the left or the right. And then I'm going to give it a vertical offset of 10 pixels so it comes down and you can see in real time what's happening which is really cool of code pen and then the next value I'm gonna give it a blur radius of 6 pixels alright and notice how it is starting to come out a little bit so I want that to go inwards so on the spread of that shadow I'm gonna give it a negative value of negative 6 pixels and notice how now it goes in a little bit and it kind of has that three-dimensional effect and I am going to lighten the shadow and a little bit and give it a 0 0.4 again so that gives it a pretty cool looking three-dimensional shadow I really like that look a lot so let's go on to the next one write a little horizontal rule and let's do another div. We're going to say box, box2. Go down here. And I didn't mean to say box2. I'm going to say box3. And it should just be a normal box because we haven't styled that yet. So let's go style box3. Box3. All right. And what we're going to do on this is we're going to say box shadow and I want to give it two zeros so it's not going anywhere and then I'm going to give it a blur distance which it means it's going to have kind of this blur shadow effect around the whole thing. So I'm going to give it five pixels and then you can either keep it that way if you want I mean it looks pretty cool but I don't want it to be that out there. I'm going to give it a little bit I'm going to pretty much give it the same RGBA that I've been giving all of them because it's kind of what I do on all my projects is pretty similar. But it's, it's hard to tell with this gray background, so uh, let me make that a little bit darker. All right, and that's kind of like a YouTube effect. If you notice their boxes, um, they're not flat on the page, but they do have a tiny bit of a shadow, so that's, 
that kind of has like a YouTube effect. So let's go on to the next one. I'm going to make box four and let me style another horizontal rule and let's do box dot box four tab. All right, so on this one, I'm gonna make a border radius. So I'm going to give the next box a border radius and it's gonna be kind of rounded corners, but the bottom border is going to make it look as if it's three dimensional. So watch this trick. So first I need to say border radius and I will say 10 pixels. So now I want to go down here. So notice I have a 10 pixel border radius. So I'm going to say border bottom 10 pixels solid black. Alright, so now notice that I have a border right here that's going along the bottom but black is too dark so I'm gonna give it another RGBA value and I'm gonna do the 0.4 on this one as well so 0 0 and 0.4 so notice if you look back far enough maybe I should go a little lighter 3 maybe that kinda gives it a little bit of a 3D effect um, not as cool as the last couple but it still works and for the next one what I want to do is I'm going to show you how to do an inset and that means that the shadow is kind of going inwards so the way we do that go down here and say box 5 and let's create it up here another horizontal rule to separate them out and I'm going to say box dot box 5 Go look at it. Alright, box shadow. And before I write the horizontal and vertical offset or the X and Y offset, I need to write inset. And now I can say 0, 0 because I don't want them to have any extra Y offset. And then I'm going to give it a blur distance of maybe 10 pixels. And notice how the shadow is going inwards. So that's what offset means and I'm going to give it a value instead of RGBA this time I'll just give it a value of 777 and notice how it has this pretty cool inward style and maybe I want to make this a little bit darker I'll go 555 alright that's a little bit darker so that's what an inset looks like so that's pretty much the code um, maybe I can post this if you want or you can just pause the video at different times but I'm going to go through this really quick. This is the inset. This is where I use the border radius to kind of make the shadowed bottom. Uh, this, I didn't have any X or Y offsets. I just had, I did this all with just a blur. This one, I had a negative value on the spread of the shadow, which made it go inwards to give it that little 3D coming out at you effect. And this is just the typical horizontal and vertical offset with a little bit of a blur. So please try out CodePen.io. It's amazing. You can do all types of cool things with CSS. Uh, you can use less, SAS. You can even use libraries like Bourbon I use sometimes. So check this out. It's an amazing tool. And please subscribe below.